Good afternoon and welcome to the Kerry Garden Show. Alan Finn back with you here again from Boils of Calorglan for another great 15 minutes of gardening tips and advice. And this week we've got questions for Trish. Lots of your questions, you've been sending them in and we're going to try and get through as many as we possibly can right here on the Garden Show. Now let's just go find her. So joining us here at the table with lots of colour and lots of interesting things here in Boils of Calorglan is our gardening expert Trish. How are we Trish? I'm very good Alan, thank you. <laughs> you good? Yeah. I am indeed. How are things going? Are you getting lots of questions? Lots of questions and queries and, and queries people are and wondering stuff. what's going on. I think people have done so much gardening in the last two years with Covid that they've yeah. got all these plants and areas that they've done and I just want to know what to do so we're in the right spot anyway we're in. We well, no, I wanted you. to prepare you because we've uh, we've gotten so many questions um, and there's lots of people coming in and asking Trish and stuff uh, lots of stuff in the garden center we've decided to have a show solely on answering your questions so I've got a few uh, and you've got a few answers here we've lined up for the people so hopefully uh, we'll manage to get through as many as we yes, can yeah. in the show okay so we're going to start off with uh, someone who sent in a question saying they've got a patio and they would like to have some plants around where they sit and also uh, for the round where the barbecue is can they grow herbs somewhere near it and also the hard look around the patio and the furniture they want to try and take the look off so there's a lot there about outdoor spaces which has become a huge thing really huge. In, in Irish gardens yeah we don't always have the weather for it but nope. <laughs> the, the the dream is always there and a lot of people have put a lot of work into it yeah like the patios I can understand where that person is coming from when you put down patio slabs and everything mm -hmm. it's kind of very cold looking straight away and she's right in saying how can I incorporate plants in around it to soften it? But it's not just plants even, like there's no, you're bringing the indoors, outdoors basically. Mm -hmm. So if you're out in the evening, and as you say, the Irish weather the way it is, we don't get sunshine yeah. <laughs> all the time. Well, we get a sunshine, but we get a cold breeze with yes. it as well. Do you know? And we also, in the evening time, might get a bit chilly. So it is no harm. And this will actually give you lovely color then as well yeah. for the area um, with lovely rugs that you can put over you at night time if it does get a bit chilly mm. and like even that draped over the furniture whether it's over your chair or whatever it just gives a splash of color then as well and yeah. it just lightens up the whole area and i think it makes it more cozy and more inviting to go out into the garden then as well yeah absolutely and of course like you always have the cushions as well like yeah. with loads of cushions between different colors you could turn it one way pink and the next day if you wanted to be blue <laughs> And it just makes it more comfortable and more cosy. Yeah. And of course, another thing as well is lights. Lights always make it look lovely and warm in yeah. the evening times. Now, we have a great selection. Of course, you always have the lanterns, right? You can stick a few candles in there. You can out, stick yeah. a few candles in there. You can get the lanterns that actually have the candle in it already and they're solar, or mm -hmm. else you just put on a switch and it's just a false candle. But it just gives you the image of something nice and warm and flickering. It's very, it's very welcoming. It's a exactly. lovely kind of warm and welcoming yeah. look. And also as well, a lot of people then over their table they might have a parasol or a gazebo or whatever mm -hmm. and what i have with my now i have one here as well this one is a gazebo anyway if you had a okay. gazebo out in the patio area there's lights for that then as well okay excellent um so it comes they're all led they're all smart solar lights and um with this one then even the cable ties come with it to string it up perfect and again it just gives a nice warm glow a very very trendy kind of modern looking uh, uh, lights that you can kind of hang off yeah there's um, string lights then if you even had a fence around or it or pergola yeah. or mm -hmm. even if you had trees or anything like that they're absolutely lovely and again mm -hmm. they're led smart now i think these are absolutely beautiful they're a spiral light they're like a little lantern but you can yeah. imagine these hanging through the tree even if you had a tree down the garden yeah. if you're sitting in your patio just and the looking, look of it looking it down the garden and yeah. they look fabulous and again there's no need for an electric source out in the garden because a lot of people have gardens and electric sources very close to the house yes, and they can't get it down to the end exactly. of the garden and that could so be where their area like is ideas like this then mm. are fantastic and then of course we have um the lights then that you can just stick into the ground here and there that give yeah, illumination. So if, for people then who might actually have a path you know maybe going down you can stick these kind of solar lights either side it gives it a real i always just think of of those those beaches you know where you have the tiki lamps uh, the you know out exactly. along there it, it's yeah. a little bit of that and it's bringing a nice little sense into the garden about it and also as you said the fact that they're solar means you're not depending on electricity and even on a cloudy day they can recharge oh, they they, can. when the lights go down they automatically come up yeah. and give 
gives a whole new life to your garden. Oh, it does. So and let's talk about then about the plants that they could possibly yes. have around now, because that's one of the things as well too, obviously, that can make a big difference. It can, a huge difference. Like I have a lovely window box done up here now and you can even see straight away that colour in that is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now in the front of that I have a lovely little nemesia, nemesia yeah. that's scented then as well. So it's nice to sit down and feel the fragrance around you. There's petunias, there's verbenas, there's loads of stuff in that and there's yeah. loads of different colours. Again, if you're matching off, if you see that the pink rug that I had, and you're kind of matching it off with the pink flowers, it just all coordinates Perfect. with each other then as well. Yeah. Um, now I see we have some uh, lavender that we uh, we had on the show last week as well, but these are uh, are the French lavender. They're aren't they? the French That's lavender, right, and everybody much. wonders what's the difference between them. So even if anybody's on Facebook or YouTube, they'll actually be able to see it now in flower. That's the French lavender. It comes in the lilac, or I have a lovely one here with a blue and a white top to it's them a lovely as well. Cl combination, yeah. Yeah, and then the English lavender is just about to come into flower now. This would be the most common one okay. that you'd have. It yeah. would be the true lavender, really. Right. And like the boat or the three of them, they all have fabulous scent. Yeah. So we've lovely pots down there as well. Again, it's got lovely colours in the pots and they're just yeah. brightening up the whole patio. And I swear, if you put one of those colourful pots in front of you on, on those grey slabs you might have outside, you won't be long forgetting about the grey slabs because no. they just pop out they and, pop and out. look really, really good. And like that as well, if I was doing pots maybe near the table or somewhere near it, I'd actually put them in a cluster of three rather mm -hmm. than one pot here and one pot down the corner. Mm -hmm. Put them in a cluster of three that, so that you get a better effect lovely from it. Lovely effect, yeah. And yeah. even if they were different levels, do you know, exactly. if you had kind of a small and two meters, and a big yeah. one that'd be, that'd be really really oh, nice be fabulous. so the final part of that then is uh, just talking about maybe kind of herbs and stuff and I see you've got a few yeah, in there like because we could all dream about having some cocktails outside <laughs> as well over the summer couldn't we we could indeed <laughs> a lot of people have barbecues and areas and we have loads of barbecues here in stock in the shop if you want to come in and have a look mm -hmm. but it's always nice to have herbs beside it so if you're cooking you don't want to be running off down the garden for a bit of oregano for my pizza yeah there's it there that one there it's a hot and spicy oregano Lovely. and you can add that into your pizzas mm -hmm. but as you're saying this one here then is a mint strawberry now when you show me that i was like going a mint <laughs> strawberry if you got the two flavors of that my goodness be absolutely that'd be fantastic. fabulous so yeah. all you have to do with that is get some water put in your leaves leave yeah there for a while yeah. and you can drink and it'll be lovely and refreshing yeah, and you refreshing. can use it in your cocktails as well whatever or just you're every, any non-alcoholic <laughs> non drinks as well too which would be nice and refreshing, exactly which is and yeah. also you have the common thyme then which is great which you can add to any of the meats and you have your bit of parsley, parsley yeah. that you could put in so with the herbs then you can plant them again in a little pot beside mm -hmm. the patio or a little window box somewhere that they're near you can bend down yeah. take your little sprigs and cook away like one thing I've seen a lot of Trish as well too is um, where people kind of have have them kind of hanging on a, a little kind of a, off a wall yes you know they have these little kind of herb walls where you've got like different layers and stuff like that and you kind of have those things here as well too where you can hang we do yeah we've got nice little there what it is is the back of it is flat up against the wall that's it and it'll sit up against it we've hanging baskets we've window boxes mm. we've everything like we even have strawberries if you wanted your strawberries as well we've uh -huh. strawberry hanging baskets there yeah. and they're ready and all and they'll just fruit away yeah, it'd be great. Um, so it'll be great. So, so that I is, think with that now you should be quite happy with the I tell patio. you what I'm, I'm getting hungry <laughs> even thinking about it okay so uh, we got another question in here from a gentleman who was asked what is the difference between mulch and compost um, when putting it around shrub beds and, and what difference does it make so this is one I, I always kind of think of as well too so the mulch and the compost What's the difference and how can it actually help in, help your beds and your shrubs? Okay, so a lot of people then when they plant their beds, they want to keep down the weeds, yes. really, right? So basically it's the mulch then, it's the bark mulch, it's the stone mulch, that's what you're calling mulch. So what that does then, it keeps the moisture down into the ground, so if okay. you've got a dry area, it's great for that alone. But on the other side then, if you've got a very wet area, I think we covered it before, don't put the mulch down because, it'll because keep it's it holding the moisture. And it won't let yeah. Go, yeah. So if you're putting down, say, your bark mulch, what it does as well, it stops the weeds from coming up. Okay. So if you've got your bark mulch and when it rains, it kind of knits together. So when it knits together, it's stopping the light from getting into the soil so the weeds aren't sprouting up. Now, you will get an odd weed seedling because obviously weed seedlings fly in the air then Absolutely. as well and They're land so on top small. of the they mulch. Will. And if there's any bit of moisture there, they have a very good possibility of sprouting. Yes, so. exactly. But um, again, when you're putting the mulch down, you'd want to put it down about two inches okay. to get the effect of it to stop the weeds from coming up so that would be your mulch mm -hmm. your compost then like 
you can actually get a compost mulch or if I be saying if you want to mulch around your plants with a compost I'm probably using the wrong terminology because I'm probably confusing people that, then that could be where he's going yeah. from yeah so your compost just adds nutrients to the plants and to the soil mm -hmm. so say for example you've got your rhododendrons camellias that might be going a bit yellow you'd actually compost them around with an ericaceous compost. Mm. So what it is then, then it's releasing the nutrients from the compost, it's going down to the roots of the plant that's already planted. Mm -hmm. um, like even roses every year always benefit from a good composting. So you'd be putting down your farmyard manure or you'd be putting down your uh, geop, which is your horse manure, yeah. and you'd actually put that compost in around the roses and it releases the nutrients well over in the springtime and the roses would be better then for the whole season. Okay, right, you were talking there about, about leaves going green and I think I have a question here from someone else who sent in about their laurel hedge. Uh, the leaves are going yellow and she pretty sure that at this time of year it shouldn't be going yellow yellow yeah um, what can they do okay the laurel is actually quite a hungry plant oh right so it likes loads of nutrition mm -hmm. so this time of the year is a great time to give it uh, chicken manure so all it is is a granular form and if there's any weeds at the base of the laurel hedge and just hold them out first or get rid of them you could loosen up the soil if possible but if not it's fine and just to scatter down your chicken manure okay and again that would benefit now from a good compost in the early spring as well around the base of it and mm. to release nutrients over mm. the summertime as well yeah so it's a hungry one it's a it? hungry <laughs> it's one a laurel yeah. hedge is a hungry <laughs> one that's a that's one i'll definitely remember okay now we've had quite a few on this topic um we'll start with this lady but i know drew has also got in contact um, on the Facebook page as well too, Drew. Um, he was wondering about um, dandelions, daisies and moss. Yes, yeah. They're covering. Now, Drew himself had said that he had, he'd given us loads of scrapings, he's treated it, they've put loads of moss and they still kind of keeps coming back. We had touched on what could be the cause yes. um, a few shows ago, but let's go through it again because a lot of people are asking about it. Okay, so I suppose, as I always say, if you've got a lot of moss in, the gar in your lawn, it's actually... Why is it there? You have to ask yourself, is the ground too wet? Is the soil too peaty? Is it shaded? Is it very compact? Okay. So no matter how much sulphate of iron or moss master or any of the products that we'd have that you're putting down, mm -hmm. it'll just solve the remedy for the moment, okay. but it's not long term. It's not the long term It's not cure. long term. Yeah. Now, if you have a lot of moss in the garden or in your lawn, sorry, you're better off putting down sulphate of iron. Okay. Right. Now that will blacken the moss and you will have to rake Scarifier, it. Now, yeah. if it's very, very bad, you're actually better off to hire a scarifier then okay. and just to tear the moss out of it. Yeah. Once that's done, then you can concentrate on feeding the lawn if there's any weeds in the lawn then as well. Yeah. Now, I suppose with the scenario and weeds in the lawn, what's on it at the moment? You've got your dandelions, you've got your daisies, daisies you've yeah. got your buttercups. A lot of people say if you're into your wildflowers and you want to encourage bees and everything, don't mow don't in May. Mow, yeah. That's, oh, don't mow, don't in, mow May. in May. Okay. Because they're at their best, best at that time yeah. and, the, and bees the bees will get need it. Them. They need them as well at that On time. On the yeah. other side of that, then, a lot of people love lovely, neat lawns yes, because absolutely. it does enhance the house and yeah. it does enhance the surrounding area. So, what I would suggest with that, if you've got an area in the corner that you can just leave, leave. a small yeah. area and let that be your wildflower area and cut the rest of it as normal, then yeah. to keep it nice and tidy. But if you want to use a weed killer then to kill these dandelions and daisies and buttercups, it's a weed all law and weed killer. Okay. Now, as it says here, it kills the weeds, not, not the, the lawn. lawn yeah, okay. Right. There's different products of weed all, so just make ask sure. us or okay. make sure or That's read the, right the box properly because mm. there's weed all that will just kill everything. Everything. Oh, it'll kill yeah. weeds around shrub beds and it'll kill grass around shrub beds. Okay. So make sure it's the lawn product that you're using. And you know what? Be another thing just for everybody to remember is to make sure they're getting it from a garden centre because you can sometimes find them in you know a discount store. There's no one there who's going to know the ex no, there's no exactly. expertise there. Yeah. So like make sure you, you have someone like yourself that's to ask. It. If you just come in, run and say, is this the one? I have yeah. dandelions or whatever, will this do it? Mm. Um, with the thing then, you're better off to cut your lawn. Don't cut it too tight. I'm still in the thing. I know people cut it tight and say, I don't want to cut it now for two weeks. <laughs> Give it a bit I, of time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're better off to try and get your lawn cut every week. Okay. So keep it at the higher keep setting. It, yeah. So make sure you cut your lawn first, have a dry day, and then put this out, and that'll get rid of your dandelions and daisies. And there's no way to actually slow down the growth of a lawn, especially at this time of year, really, no, is there? No, because 
not in the typical Irish weather. No. You've got the heat, Perfect you've got the rain. And I think so everything Look, it's is why we're growing. all so famous for the we green, all green love grass. Going out and, <laughs> and mowing the lawn. It's a bit of me time when you go out. Do you know what? I have to admit now, it's some great uh, time of solace if I stick in headphones and listen exactly. to a podcast. Yeah, and music. you can it's enjoy great. it as well. Don't make it into a chore. Yeah. Go out with the positivity that it's actually Absolutely. nice and what yeah. it'll look like afterwards. Okay, so hopefully that'll solve Drew's issue. And just to go back, just on the possibility of you talked about the wrong soil or the soil could be too peaty. Yes. How do they counteract that? So if there's constantly moss regrowing, there could be a, a, an actual soil issue. Yes, so what you need to do is get a soil testing kit, which we have here in the garden centre. They're very simple to use. We can go through it with you anyway as yeah. well. And um, you need to add lime. Say if your soil is very, very peaty, okay. you need to add a bit of lime so to neutralise the soil. neutralise the alkaline yeah. in it, which causes all of that. Exactly. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. And so then if you had shade, then as I was saying as well, if there's big trees overhanging, clip maybe em. just clip back the branches yeah. a bit, do you Let know, and that should in. help. And if it's very compact, then you need to aerate the soil, whether it's a small area just to get a fork and put holes in it, or mm. you can actually hire out an aerator as well. It just kind of rolls around and it just puts holes in the ground. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Let the, the things okay right we're going to um, pivot to another interesting one so because we had a question in asking can you plant fruit trees at the moment yes yeah i know a lot of people come in and they're thinking sure it'll be in fruit soon and can yeah. i plant them or whatever late? you can plant them but don't expect the full fr- crop. you're not going to get a crop this year no yeah. you yeah. might get one or two out of it but at least you haven't planted and they'll be well rooted and you'll yeah. get your big crop next year yeah. so we will go through maybe in another show the planting of fruit trees okay. and bushes but yeah. just to remember if you're planting fruit trees you need a fairly big area because they need two for pollination if not three yes so and you can imagine then an apple tree will grow to about 10 12 feet high spread out five to six feet wide Mm -hmm. so that's kind of the dimensions you need kind of a sheltered area but there's no problem in planting them now because it's the same with trees shrubs anything they're all in pots this time of the year so it's just a matter of taking off the pot planting the the right area and putting it in exactly and as you said like it, it it will give it a full nearly a full year then to get uh, a good root system yes. and everything so next year is oh, you'll when have you a really crop see then a bumper next year. yeah you'll yes. see a real and also remember to put it in a sheltered spot if it's very very windy the flowers get blown off too quickly okay and then you have insufficient pollination oh, and less fruiting yeah yeah so Just that's actually a big problem that if it's in too windy an area and the flowers go flying no cross pollination. No cross pollination. Wow. So it's just it is important to talk to somebody in the garden centre yeah. about positioning, positioning, and, and what varieties will go with each, other. with each other. Because basically, what it is is that if you've got two varieties, they have to be flowering at the same time. Okay. And that's the pollination then. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then you've got your wildflower area where the bees are working, and, and then, they'll help out as and well they'll too. And they help out. Yeah. So it's just like you know, it's not just the bees you're feeding them, and then they're going yeah. away. It's no. not. You have it's your the whole ecosystem in your garden. Exactly. You know, as they would always say, yeah, it's, it's, that's it's, it. It, it, all, it all goes. Okay, so we've got another one. We'll go up to um, the, we'll go to the vegetables now, and uh, someone has sent in saying my potatoes are sprouting up over the soil. Is it time to cover them? It is. Okay. Yeah, very important to cover them because if you don't cover them, what happens then when the potatoes grow, they're too close to the surface and they'll be green and you can't eat them. They need to be deep. Yeah. So what, what you're doing then with the potatoes, it's called earthing up. So I think we talked about that earlier in the season, but what it is, is just that you're heaping the soil up around yeah. the greenery. Don't be afraid to cover it. Say, for example, this is your potato and these are your shoots. Cover it up to here. Yeah. And cover it in a peak Give or whatever. Give it like an inch or two over. Exactly. Over it, yeah. yeah, because the soil will settle. So mm-hmm. if you kind of just put it loosely around it, it'll settle and then you still have green shoots. Okay. It also protects it if there's any frost or anything like that as well. But yeah. hopefully we should be near the end of hopefully, that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, definitely to earth up your potatoes. Okay, so anyone who's got the potatoes, yeah. uh, it's a good time to do it. Um, Um, Now, I will finish with this one, um, and it's about bedding plants. And we were we were going to do bedding plants this week, weren't we, Trish? We were. But <laughs> they've flown out the door. They so have. everyone is doing their bedding at the moment. And it is the ideal time, really. To it go is, it. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're having a big delivery in today. So we'll be, yeah. fu- we'll be full again. Full again for the weekend. Full yeah. again for the weekend. But um, it is the ideal time. Like, if you've got hanging baskets <clears> now or window boxes, it's a great time to do it up. Because if you've got a window box and you do get... I'm not sure if there's going to be any more frost or not, but mm-hmm. we should be at the end of it. At least you can lift in the window box. Put yes. it out during the day, lift it in at night time. We've plenty of plants. We'll actually do a full show on that as yeah. to how to plant up a window box and a hanging basket, um, plant up your beds. 
I would I would go ahead. Like yeah. there is certain bedding plants that might be a little bit more hardier than others. But again, yeah. come in here to us and we'll give you advice yeah. on and all that. And it's also as well too um, about uh, planning out how even just with this one here in front of us, we have some in flower and there's some ready to go. You know, it's yes, it's, it's exactly. continuation of yeah. colour. We're always talking. about. I like about. that now. As I say, you can do up <coughs> your window boxes. That's been done a couple of weeks. We can put that out now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if you're leaving it until the weather gets a bit better, or whatever. You know, you're, you're prolonging the season then, you yeah. don't have your flower when you need it. So even if you okay. do it up now, it's growing away and it'll be in full flower. But when the sunshine comes, When the more. sunshine comes. It's coming in through, <laughs> some, through the clouds <laughs> here at the moment and the bit of the breezes. But uh, listen, that's, uh, that's great. One last one, we'll go really, really quick because I know it's another big one. Um, we didn't talk about roses okay. and uh, green fly. Yes. Because it's a big issue because is. of the weather, the way it's going between the moisture and the heat uh, when we get it and stuff like that. Green fly, it's rampant. It's rampant at the moment. So, so you really want to keep an eye on it. Get under so, those leaves. Yes, exactly. Get under those leaves. What you'll Check see, them out. you'll actually see the green fly on it. But also, if there is no green fly on it, usually a lot of these, they're actually, that's a fungus control one now, which will kill the black spot okay. and the rust and all that. We also have the one that will encourage, the, or it will kill the green fly as well. Yeah, the rose clear, um, wasn't the it? The rose clear, rose yeah. Rose clear, yeah. I, th um, I thought actually this was it, but we don't. We don't so both of them, yeah. like, you can put on. <clears throat> Whether you have them or not, I do it every two weeks. But yes. definitely, if there's green fly on it, if you don't get rid of it now, oh, it'll actually it's just suffer. distort yeah. all the leaves. There'll be no buds on the roses at the moment, but it'll distort all the leaves. It'll set the plant back then as well. Okay. So you just want to be careful. And also as well, give your roses a good feed at the moment as well. Okay. We have specific rose fertilizer in boxes mm -hmm. and that can be put around it. Now with that rose fertilizer, it's got magnesium in it, which will green up the leaf. It'll strengthen the plant. Okay. And if you've got a good strong plant, it doesn't actually be prone then to getting diseases. Mm -hmm. So just give them a good feed and feed them about every three to four weeks. Yeah. And finally, uh, I had a, a, a friend of mine, Fred, he came in and was talking about his roses. He's been growing roses for 20 years and he's they've always kept coming back but a long time ago uh, a gentleman told him to put some epsom salts around the base of the plant but he never knew why yeah and he thought it was a strange one but he's been doing it and his roses have been flourishing what is the what is the benefit it would of epsom be salts? an old thing epsom salts like yeah. that would have been out years and years ago and everybody would have put it around everything the epsom salts actually what i would like the magnesium it greens up the plant it okay. makes the plant healthy stronger. and stronger yeah. a lot of people have put that on leafy vegetables as well like your your cabbage Okay. Do you know that sort of way because yeah. it'll green up the leaf. Right. Um, so the Epsom salts is excellent and you'd put that on in the springtime. So it's not just for the bath? No. <laughs> That's a different Epsom Different, a different type of Epsom Don't come in here and no. buy the box of Epsom salts for your bath. <laughs> you definitely don't want to sit in that. You won't be coming no, out smelling no, of excellent. roses. No, it's excellent. It's excellent. It just builds up the plant and it makes it good and strong. And okay. um, there's like nitrogen in it as well. Oh, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Okay, well, listen, that is it. Listen, we've pow powered through a load of questions. Uh, thanks so much, Trish, for your time and for your expertise. Uh, and hopefully we've given you lots of ideas on what you can do to help and answer some of your queries. Do keep them coming in. We'll, uh, we'll try and answer them and get to them as best we can as the season goes on so do keep them coming in so that's it for this week for myself trish dave and everyone here at boils of calorglan we'll talk to you next week happy gardening